though, this is Simon more so than Captain Australia in my Kids Cancer T-shirt, the Kids Cancer Project T-shirt, sorry, um, and more or less civilian clothes, if you count my, still got my boots and pants on. Um, I've just had a, a lovely meal with uh, Nigel from the local Marimbula Chamber of Commerce. I'd like to thank them and um, the hotel here, Lakeside Hotel, for another safe night of rest. Lucky days for Captain Australia. Um, I'm looking forward actually, because there's been just so much kindness and hospitality. After Eden, there's gonna be a period between Eden and Orbost where it's a couple of hundred Ks where there's not much going on. So I'm kind of looking forward to getting back to basics again for a bit where I just have to walk and camp and walk and camp. I'd like to think that I'll get to Orbost in you know six-ish days but those six six six-ish days will be characterized by just long country walks and rough sleeping because i've just had it too easy for a while anyway my lovely coast hosts are wonderful and i'm grateful and thankful and in the morning they're gonna help me get some you know i need this replacement medicine from the local pharmacy and uh some insoles for my sh boots. So it's lovely knowing the local chamber of commerce. Um, but yeah, so here I am, I get to sleep in a comfortable bed and I will sleep well. I've just, ha I've had an energy deficit, I think for the last couple of weeks, really, if I'm honest. And one of the main reasons for it is my thyroid medicine being no good anymore. Uh, but we'll remedy that tomorrow. Carly says, hello, Devo. I missed you in Bega, Devo? I hope you're coming back down our way soon in the future. I will redo the entire walk with my family uh, once, once I get my life back on track and get home and all the rest. Devo, isn't that like, uh, push it, push it real good. No, that's salt and pepper. Devo were, I'll whip it, I'll whip it good. Oh, devastated. Okay, sorry, I should know that. <laughs> you got to look grey hair mate you know old fella I don't do this new fangled internet talk and stuff um, but yeah look so the plan uh, Alan says hi champion Alan from Foxy's in Ulladulla keep up the great work my friend uh, Alan you lovely bloke I still have not found a fox shaped plushie to wear but as soon as I do I will stand and deliver says John Salmon what your money or your life are you you're trying to rob me what's going on um, good night, mate, says Nathan. Uh, hey, Nathan, good to see your name again. I remember Whip It, that's it. Oh, Whip It Good. Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, I don't know. And they wore the ridiculous silver outfits and funny hats that were like hubcaps or something. So, Eden tomorrow. I'll push to Eden. I will possibly overnight there or a little bit past there. Did about 34K today. Um, I feel it. I'm really feeling it when I'm doing, you know, more than seven or eight hours of walking. I think my endurance is effect affected by my thyroid. I'm just not making energy the way that I should. David says, G'day, mate. The Manland boys have dispatched the rooster. <laughs> oh, no. Well, if you had to do it, why couldn't you do it on the night that I was sleeping there, you, you know? All right. Um, Lee says uh we'll do, 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 back one missed one Haley says did you have a good walk today yes Haley, i did i had a lovely walk with a very nice lady named lorraine uh she walked with me from vega to Wollumla, if that's how you say it so it's about 22k and then i walked on by myself for another two 12k after that uh so it's like 34 35 in total um and yeah it was productive it was good and pleasant Lee says, I hope you have comfortable lodgings for the night in the lake view fed you well. I've had a chicken parmigiana and I am in comfort. Hang on. I'll... So I've got a room here where you could have two kids and a grown up here on the big old bed. But my bed is empty. Uh, so we've got doodly -do 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 -do. hope you have comfortable lodgings. Andy Bosch. Don't forget Nicholson, Victoria. We'll look after you. Well, if you're on the main run into Melbourne, lovely, mate. I, I, I intend to visit every town on the path and say hello to anyone who wants to say hello. Lachelle, the shell, says, 
34 came today. That's impressive. I'm capable of better. Marimbula is stunning. Enjoy your short stay. Yeah, I, I, I quite find it to be a very pretty town and lovely, like all of the South Coast, lovely people. Diddly dee. Guza, hey, Captain, are you staying in Eden tomorrow night? Guza, I think I will. Um, if you live in Eden and you want to meet up, I think I'll – it's not that long a walk. I think it's like 25K or something from here. So I'll hit the road, get there mid-afternoon, stay overnight, and um, supply up in the morning as well. So if, you want, if you're in Eden and you want to meet up, there should be ample opportunities for a coffee or something. So drop me a message if you're in Eden and you'd like to meet. David James, its mate doesn't quote until 6 a.m. now. Well, you're a rooster murdering bit of a rat bag, you know. I joked about roostering the, mur roostering the murder, murdering the rooster. It was a joke. So for those, sorry, not understanding, I stayed at a place called Manland. It was a disturbing place. It was a place of beer bottles and kayaks and <laughs> chainsaws and, uh, yeah, these three three guys who um, were definitely men. Um, and, yeah, the, the roosters started at, like, 4.30 and went all through the morning. Sounds like one has sadly met its end. Renee says, congratulations on the progress. Here's an interesting fact in case you didn't know. COVID can last past a week. I'm eight days in and can't shake it. Hope you remain well the rest of the way. Oh, Renee, I'm sorry you're struggling. So, you know, it's all your immune system, you know, your body fighting off the disease. I understand you can have some long effects from COVID too, like it can impair your smell for quite a while and stuff. I hope I hope you're doing okay, my friend. Um, John, hi, Captain. Sorry to confuse you. That was one of Devo's songs. Whip it. Whip it real good. Do, 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 do. Good on you for resting comfortably this night. Stacey Apps, what do you do when you reach Melbourne? Is that a limerick? No, here is a question. I, when I get to Melbourne, I fall to my knees at Federation Square, get to the Federation Square, and I just start crying. I kiss the ground like I'm the Pope. The Pope used to do when he got off an airplane. He would fall to his knees and kiss the ground, cry a lot, um, try and get on the local telly because I think that, that that'll be a moment where if I can get a bit of media, these media pulses are essential for the success of the charity. So... If I can stimulate that, we can make some extra money for the charity. So arrival at Melbourne might be a newsworthy moment. So hopefully we can get uh, on the telly again and uh, make some bucks. But, yeah, once I've done that and I've made love to Federation Square, uh, the general goal is to get home. But I might have to stay in Melbourne for a few days just to see if we can close off with a little bit of media because the mission is just to help the Kids Cancer Project. Diddly dee 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 dee. Jesse Bebear, g'day mate, how are you? I'm doing really well, thanks, Jesse. I'm feeling like since I've gone a bit feral. So when I was sitting in the um, like the dining area in this hotel, I could hear everything. There were people at different tables, you know, over there and there, having their chat. There was this lovely man, Nigel, who I was talking intently to and focused on his word, could hear that. There was music in the back. All of these like ambient sounds that you normally just zone out, I could hear all of it. So um, I, I think from living feral for a bit, uh, I've I've got changes. Maybe my weather sense is starting to get better too. And the music has been because I'm just not getting the amount of music that I need for my soul. When I hear a song, it, it just sort of it's more likely to move me. So I heard this song that I think it's by Bastille. It's like lately. I've been thinking, I want you to be happier. I want you to be happier when the morning comes. You know that one? So just little, I hear little snippets of music and it makes me feel emotional. So I don't know. I hope I get to take a lot of this back home with me when I'm done with the walk. Carly Ann says, what's been the best experience so far? Oh, Jesus. There's so many to characterize, Carly. Like, I'm, I, I am shy, but I'm also a larrikin. So I like the experiences that have moments of humor in there. Um, 
yeah, I don't know if I, I, I can pick any single thing. I mean, if you said what is the most enriching, I'd say just the toil of the walk, coming this far, carrying a heavy bag, that's been the most enriching because it has strengthened me in every way that strength matters. But in terms of best, you know, that might mean what is the funniest or the most beautiful or the most profound. Uh, I loved it when Uncle Phil, he, he's an indigenous leader from Aladala. He gave me the ceremonial ceremonial greeting to uh, the Yuan the Yuan country. So this is uh, the Yuan nation, and um, he sang the blessings of his people to me, and I cried when he did, because it was just sweet and beautiful, like he was singing to this mighty sea eagle in his own language that I that I cannot understand. But he explained to me later what some of the words were, and singing to his ancestor who lives in a, a little good old bird and they're, they're supposed to watch over me. I found that wonderfully moving and it changed my perspective as I walked through country after that. Um, I met this wonderful family and this guy who taught me some things the other night. Uh, his name's Christoph and he's just a, a kind hearted, decent, just wise person. And I, I really got a lot from our talks. So I think for me, the standouts are, are generally the people. But they're, okay, like when, you know, when they had that little tsunami scare, I was, I was in a, I was in my um, sleeping bag in just sand dunes in the middle of the National Park, no one around for miles. And I was looking up at this electrical storm that was just rippling across the sky. The rain hadn't hit yet. It was beautiful, but the, the, in bits of the sky, you could see like the lush, just milky stars. And there was some cloud coverage where you couldn't see anything much, but then there'd be ripples of lightning across the sky and it was gorgeous. And then I started to get these texts because I only had very basic reception. Couldn't get online, couldn't do anything like that. And the texts were, get the hell out of there, there's a tsunami coming. That was a wonderful moment. It was like, get out, get out. I got five, six, seven texts all coming in. You got to run for it. Get to high ground. And I'm like, come on, what the hell? So this is an organized prank. But I couldn't get online. So I was given all of the panic, none of the facts, and I couldn't get online to verify it. So I made a conscious choice. You know, it started to rain, pulled the tarp over the top, went to sleep. Because I, I said, would you rather, you know, to myself, would you rather die in a bed in a hospital of advanced cancer or dragged away with a hammock wrapped around your leg, dressed as a superhero, screaming at the top of your lungs as a tsunami washes you under, you know, I'll choose number B, number B, or, you know, the second one. Uh, so, you know, there's heaps of little moments like that that, I couldn't tell you. Yeah, I couldn't tell you what's the best. But for me, the spiritual moments are the most rewarding. The difficult moments make me stronger. The personal moments teach me. And uh, But there's funny moments like crossing uh, when I got to Harrington and crossed the Manning River. All of the marine rescue people standing there on the pier. Here comes Captain Australia. And I walk out and get on the launch and they Breaker, breaker, we're all headed for Running River. We have three passengers. There's Roy Ravenham, Barry Butler, and Captain Australia, Captain Australia, and then out on the launch to get across the river. That was wonderful. It was so, there's so many little things that are just going to stand out in memories for the rest of my life, and I get to take them back with me. Great. Um, Adam says, a very good evening to you, Captain. You're doing tremendously well. I take my hat off to you, mate. I tip my hat to you as well, good sir. Thank you. Um, Diane says, good to see you're in a nice, nice, safe, dry place tonight, Cap. Diane, the, the people that I stayed with in uh, uh, Marimbula, Mar uh, the, the, the healing mountain where, where an, a, a warrior becomes a man in indigenous culture, this place it is gorgeous. And they have a non-operational venue there, cabins, accommodation, it's being built for like weddings or corporate retreats and stuff, but it's not open to the public at the moment. They have peacocks and 
courses and it's a healing place. And I, I found teaching in that place. And they asked me to extend an invitation to you, Archer and your family. When Archer gets out of the Wesley, if you want to drive down there, stay there. And, and you know, just have, you have, can have your privacy or you can talk to the family. They're a wonderful family. Whatever you would want to do, you don't have to. You're not on the hook for any of this. But if you wanted to, it's a place of respite. It's a place of healing and it's a place of healing in even in like an ancient indigenous culture. It's a beautiful place. So if you want to go there, I, I sent you a text with the information. So um, yeah, that's something for you to think about. I know you probably can't see that now with still in Archer still in Westmead, but if you want to do that, think about it. Uh, Lee says, how can we donate to your cause? Lee, if you look at the sticky post, there's a story from the project. A lot of the posts have a link to the charity page. It says Raise Lee in the link um, and Captain Australia's Big Walk. That's a page hosted by the Kids Cancer Project. Uh, so every donation flows directly through to paediatric cancer research. And because it's just me, this old buffet doing his own weird thing, the charity isn't really participating in any serious level. So there's no overhead, there's no cost. Every single cent of every single dollar goes straight into paediatric research. You know what I mean? Like if you give your charity donation to feed, feed hungry orphans in Guatemala, um, well, the charity has to pay for airfares, marketing. It has to has all of these other costs that become overhead and, and your donation doesn't necessarily buy food. So here's straight into paediatric cancer research. And yeah, if you look at the sticky post and the link, bang. Kane says, Hey mate, it's also a cane. Sorry, pink mohawk punk cane, right? Met this man on the road a couple of times. Lovely dude. He dyed his uh, mohawk a flamboyant bright pink uh, to teach his daughter, his lovely young daughter, that you shouldn't be afraid to be yourself. Because she wanted to dye her hair pink, but she was a bit shy, worried her friends would judge her. So he said, look, I love you. I'm your father. Although I my hair pink, don't worry what other idiots have to say. If people give you a hard time, they're just not for you. And you're better than them anyway, so just find the people who are for you. But don't change you just because some idiot thinks you shouldn't have pink hair. Uh, hey, mate, it's awesome to see how far you've travelled since I last seen you. You have inspired me to shave my mo. What have you done? Shave my mohawk for a cure. You might realize it, but your story has given me the kick up the bum I needed. Thank you for all you are doing. It's awesome to be following your journey. Well, thank you, Kane. I'm humbled by that, but that pink mohawk was probably the best part of you. Like the old biblical Samson and Goliath, now that you've gotten rid of your hair, you're just some buffhead, mate. Guza, no coffee, a couple of beers in Eden. Count me in, Guza. So remind me when I'm in town, wherever you want to meet, whatever you want to do, I'll, I'll come find you, you come find me. We'll have those couple of beers, okay? Danny, let's make it happen. Is that the beers in in, in um, Eden? If so, yep, let's make it happen. Diddly D, sorry, sorry, looking at. Well done, awesome Kane says, LaJoy. Okay. Uh, you're spot on with that tune, says Adam. Oh, the, the happier. I think that's a lovely song. It's quite just sweet, you know. Um, Daniel says, amazing work, mate, and for really good cause. I'd be happy to throw some of your weight on my back and walk a few kilometres with you when passing through Terralgan. I, I do like having company on the road. Uh, it, it really tends to go into deep and meaningful territory, though. We talk about, I don't know, I think everybody needs a little bit of therapy. So we play therapist for each other. Um, I I'd love to team up. I prefer to carry my own pack though, because it's a burden that's become to some extent a real part of me. I've been able to pull it back to a healthier level. So it's only like 20K, 18K now. It's nowhere near as heavy as it was. Um, and it's still make, continuing to make me stronger. So I'd like to carry my own pack. Kelso says, how is our little buddy Archer doing? Haven't heard for a bit. Still in Westmead Hospital, he's had some adverse, you know, reactions to the chemotherapy, some burns and pain, but he's pushing through, I understand. 
Diddly dee dee but diddly do diddly looking for a comment to read. Pam says, keep well, safe travels tomorrow and sleep while you're enjoying. We are enjoying following your adventures. Good on you, Pam. Thanks so much. Uh, going to get medicine and insoles for my shoes tomorrow. Diane says, blown away by their generous generosity. What beautiful people. Just think about it. You might want to take a week of just healing in the shadows of Mount Mumbula. I think Mumbula or Mumla, Mumbula, something like that. But it's it's a gorgeous place, beautiful people, worth thinking about. Mandy says, hey, mate. Mate says, hey, Mandy. Do, 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 do. Kim says, hi, Captain, where are you tonight and how's the foot? The feet are doing okay, thanks, Kim. Uh, I will kick these boots off, but I've, there's pretty good sprung in now. I need to get insoles just for a little bit extra support. I'm starting to get a bit of, it's been 58 days now. Um, you'd think I'd be all good, but just this past week, I've been starting to get pains in the soles in my feet. There's a thing um, cancer patients get often uh, after chemotherapy called peripheral neuropathy. Uh, it's impacted by circulation and whatnot, where you can get with little kind of like arthritis, like pains in your extremities, like your hands and feet. I've never, I have not had that, but it could be with my thyroid out of whack and my medicine off. I'm getting something like that. In any case, we'll fix the thyroid, get some insoles, and see how we go. No problem that can't be overcome. Um, Brooke says, hi, Simon, how is your walk going? Where have you been so far? Hope you're having fun. Well, as to where I've been, I've been to Wollongong, Ding Dong, Shing Along, Rang Rang, Boy Boy, Whoop Whoop, Battle Little Lamb Dam. I've been everywhere, man, I've been everywhere. I wish I knew the words to the song. I've been to Narragong, Wollongong, Jing Along, Bing Bong. Um, yeah, so I've, if you pop it into Google Maps, Brisbane to uh, where, where am I now? Marimbula. Marimbula. Um, just pop in Brisbane to Eden. It's easier to type. That's then you'll see where I've been. Um, but yeah, it's going really well. So one of the main purposes of my walk was for it to be a pilgrimage, for it to be healing. So I I was broken after my fight with cancer. I I had no hope left in my life. I was just staying alive for my family, who I love very dearly. But if you're living only for other people, you're not living. You're a shade, you're like a ghost. And I was like that. Um, and I, I, I was able to invest in this little bit of magic and it worked. And it was the idea that I, I, I could have hope, that I could achieve a positive outcome if I did the work, and the work was to go on a pilgrimage. So I'd done it as a child, and it, it, had, it had been going from darkness to light. And the hope was invested in the idea that I could recreate that as an older man. So as a child, I walked from Brisbane to Gloucester, just outside Sydney. And I figured as an older man, I should go a step further than that. So Brisbane to Melbourne. And uh, yeah. That dimension of things is going marvelously. I'm stronger in every way that strength matters. You know, my heart is bigger and more filled with joy. And if you've watched it from the start, you'd probably be able to see that a little bit, I reckon. But yeah, I think it's a sustained thing and I think I get to take it home with me when I'm done. So that's wonderful. The Superhero Up for Science and Help a Charity thing amplified my healing, being of service. And we've raised more than a hundred grand. I'd like to see it achieve the, the, the ultimate goal of $250,000. That would be wonderful. But we're not yet even halfway there. That said, still got 30 odd days to go. And zooming into Melbourne, there's a crossing the Victorian border. There's a couple of key moments where we might be able to get a bit of media attention. And anybody watching this, if you're adjacent to the media, if your uncle Barry owns Channel 9, <laughs> whatever it is, or if you've got a rich auntie, penny bags, money bags, you know, Dolores who has like $18 million in the bank and, you know, never buys anything or whatever, anything that you can do to spread the story, if you see merit in it, will, would be tremendously helpful. But yeah, it's going really well. The charity side is going really well. I couldn't be more satisfied. Well, I could if we made a bit more money, but I, I'm very 
very pleased. And I, there's this new thing. It's become its own thing. So the walk is not mine anymore. It's ours. And there's this, this sharing in the, the joy of it, seeing this wonderful kindness that's out there in the world. You know, um, I think it's a reminder of who we really are in here, you know. So no more, well, not no more, but in defiance of all of this darkness that's, that we see growing around us, you know, there's this little reminder of just this great beauty. And you can see it in the photos I upload, you know, these people who just pull over, charge over and bear hug me. Ah, oh, this is great. You're great. And you can just see the growing joy in me and the joy that's in the people around. So it's, it's love, it's kindness, and it lifts us all up. So I think the sharing of that is powerful and worthwhile. And I love it. Mark says, safe travels, Captain. You're so awesome. Eden is so beautiful, and our son and grandies live there. Grandies, so that's your grandparents, right? Okay, nice. Lovely. Well, if, you, if your son wants to get in a selfie with Kiggity Kiggity Captain Australia, let me know. Uh, Gail says, Mumbula Mountain is such an amazing place and one feels very connected to country as soon as you are anywhere here on the coast. The coast of people, the Yuan Nation, is all a healing place. Walawani, that means safe journey in the local Durga language, sleep well. Oh, thank, thank you, Gail. I like, I like that, Walawani. Walawani, if I'm saying it right. Very nice. Uh, but, yeah, look, I, I genuinely, honestly, hand on heart, have felt that sensation of, of safety and healing. When I, when I, I stayed at that, that place at Mumbula, Mumbula Mountain, I, it was wonderful. And I knew I was there for a reason and I knew I had a moment of gravity in front of me and I tried to grab it with both hands. And I still haven't properly reconciled the things that I learned from my sensei and his family. And also just in the shadow of that mountain, I think there was a, a I leveled up and I don't really uh, know the full ramifications of it yet, you know. Diddly diddy, the Mandy AJ, good to see that you're resting up. <laughs> Cheers, Mandy, thank you. Kane again, it's not gone yet, but Eliza will shave it on April Fool's Day, as my dad's not long ago been diagnosed with blood cancer. Ah, uh, so we have decided to try to raise some money for blood cancer research. I'm sorry to hear about that, Kane. Well, I guess that's a great cause to shave off that magnificent mohawk, buddy. Um, maybe you should try and do it in such a way that you can then braid it into a ninja rope or something, you know. Michael Ike says, keep it up, buddy. You're on the other side of the mountain now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I still got a few up uphill stretches, I think, Mike. Um, yeah, Victorian border and the long stretch to Melbourne. The next walk after Eden, I think, is probably six or seven days of reasonable slog with not much. Might pass a few service stations, a few towns. I'm going to lose reception in a lot of these places too. So updates might be fewer and far between and the format will change. So I'll have to take videos and upload the videos instead of live streams. We'll see how we go. It might not be that severe, but I've been told it is. Diddly 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 diddly. Natalie Shunky has a comment. Looking forward, dude. Missed you for the following couple of days due to work. I've just tuned in. Where are you? Um, I'm at Marimbula. So on the way from Bega to Eden, I diverted here because there were some people who wanted to meet. Uh, I've, uh, I've had some companionship and fellowship tonight with a lovely man named Nigel who heads the local chamber of commerce and in the morning I'll meet some others and uh, then head on to Eden tomorrow and then the Victorian border after that. Uh, Brooke says, where are you staying tonight, mate? It's the Lakeside Hotel at Marimbula. Do 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 Jai. Ah, you, this is, sorry, this is, I've been chatting to you today, haven't I, Jai? You're a big role model superhero. Love what you're doing, mate. Keep up the good work. You'll be in Melbourne in no time. Well, I don't know about no time. I reckon it'll be somewhere up towards 30 days, my friend, but appreciate the love. And thank you. You're a lovely bloke too. It was great to meet you today. And I, did I meet you the day, like at the big affair? If, I, if I've met you twice, it was great to meet you twice. <laughs> do, 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 do. Brooke, it was good seeing you at the pub. You are a champion. Uh, cheers. 
that's that's lovely of you to say. I'm half tempted to go back and, and have another beer because I'm not quite sleepy. Rod says, hey, Captain, good work on the cartoon voices yesterday. Oh, I thought I did a terrible job. And I, I would speak to people and forget. The thing that bothers me about those only communicate in song or only communicate in cartoon voices type dares is I already look mental, <laughs> you know. So when you add that layer to it, um, if I'm meeting someone new and there's a chance to talk to them about the cause, if I talk earnestly and they understand the superhero, you know, thing and all the rest, I can win them over. But if I'm like, and you need to very, very consider donating to the charity <laughs> because the Kids Cancer Project is a really, really good cause. No, no hope of getting through. It's a train wreck. So, but sometimes I just forget and uh, I don't think I did a good job at all. Julie says, OMG, your walking days have been hot. Well done, legend. Weather's been beautiful. The whole, the whole walk down the, the south coast. Absolutely. Everybody. Oh, what the hell was that? Um, Brooke says, it was so cool seeing you at the circus too. Yeah, I enjoyed the circus. That was, it was very good. The, uh, the thing those people, things those people can do with their body is amazing. Book says, my husband said that you have walked through Coffs Harbour. Did you stop at the Big Banana? I didn't go in. I just walked straight past it. I did a little live stream from out front of the Big Banana, letting, letting the world know that I had arrived at Coffs Harbour. Then I went to a place called the Chelsea Motor Inn. That was a, for one of the early examples where a business had shown tremendous hospitality because um, they, they wrote in and said, we understand you're coming through, legend. Come and see us. And I did. I said, you can come, you can stay here, buddy. And you know what? Why don't you stay a second night? Because we saw you saying in your stream, you've hurt your foot. And I did. I had like a, an open wound on my foot because it had been raining relentlessly and wet socks and all the rest. So I had my first layover day in Coffs Harbour and I was able to catch up on laundry, have drinks with the lovely staff there. It was quite great. Um, but no, I didn't stop at the Big Banana. I'm fading out. Good night, Cap. Safe travels tomorrow. Good night, everybody. Good on you, Diane. Diddly 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 diddly. Book says, my husband, Chris, has been watching where you have been. He said that you have been through Coffs Harbour. Yep, I sure have. Sure was. Sure did. Did you look around Coffs? Um, yeah, I, I picked up a selfie stick in Coffs. Oops. Earbud fell out. Um, yeah, I didn't really go to the beach. and I, well, I did just pick up the main road. But I had a day of rest at Coffs. Hopefully no more TCAS cares, says Rod. Well, we can only hope. Um, but, 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 but Terry says, hey, mate, I have been following you from when I met you just north of Batemans Bay with Willow. My mum and daughter and grandson live in Eden. Call into the Rusty Plough Good Food and Service there. I will try to remember that, my friend. When you meet TKAS, Rod says, you can get some payback. What am I going to do? Dare, dare her to talk like Elmer Fudd? So I don't have the same tools, intelligence, and creativity or the power to inflict dares on her. So basically, she's got free reign, right? Kim says, don't throw a wok at a one it cat. What? Don't throw a wok at a one it cat. Is that like a two wongs don't make a white type thing or what? The elitity, I don't know. Wab, oh, like that's probably Elmer Fudd. Don't throw a rock at a one it. Yeah, I don't know. Wabbit bloody spell check. Okay. Did you end up getting your new flag, mate? I, I did. Hang on. <laughs> So it's just there, all intact, no ripped pieces, all good. Um, Lee Salisbury, he's raising money for one of my son's incredible doctor's charity. You can donate here. And there's a link. Lovely. Good on you for doing that. I used to live at Coffs, says Brooke. Lovely. Brad says, it's good to see you got somewhere to stay again tonight. Yep. So um, South Coast, I reckon it's been maybe not even 50-50. 
safe nights in a comfortable bed with hospitality versus sleeping rough in the bush. Um, I think I've had more safe nights. First 50 odd days of the walk, I, I would have been more like, you know, 43 of sleeping rough and seven of hospitality or something like that. I don't know, without counting that. But the South Coast has been incredibly more hospitable. Sorry, Cap, I was trying to do an Elmer fun. Yeah, oh, I can't do it either. It's too bloody hard. Ah, wah, 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 Put another dime in the jukebox, baby. Ah, wah, wah, and wah. Come and take the time and dance with me. Way. Elmer bloody flood. Why am I doing it now? I'm not on the hook to do it now. Um, anyway, all right. I don't know. You want to play a trivia game? Trivia game before bed. Um, all right, Captain Australia, name 10 Bond movies. Why the hell would I? Diamonds are forever. You only live once. Gold finger. Golden Eye, um, Live and Let Die, Live and Let Die, doo, doo. very good Beatles song, or was it Paul McCartney, I don't know, probably the Beatles, um, blah, 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 that's fine, uh, dee, 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 dee. I don't like Daniel Craig as one very much, I don't remember any of the movies, Casino Royale, um, from Russia with Love. Um, theme songs. Did I say Diamonds Are Forever? Oh, I give up. Bloody trivia games. Casino Royale, yep. Um, as your journey continues, says Vanessa. Your story allows others to participate by offering you safe shelter for your story. Well, yeah, that's that's nice and that's true. Um, Rod says, even worse, TKAS is asleep. I'm sure she will have a giggle tomorrow. Okay. What did you do with the old flag? Maybe you should auction it. Well, it's all torn to crap, Gary. Um, I just chucked it in a, a post thing and sent it home to my wife. What is your favorite song? Hmm. Um, Good question, Brooke. Uh, let me think. I don't know if there's just one. I like <clears throat> um, all kinds of music. I like rap music and hip hop, uh, but that's more for you know walking, running, exercising because um, of the beat and the cadence and the lyricism of it. Uh, I like I like Neil Young. There's a Neil Young song called Don't Let It Bring You Down that I've always quite loved. And it's like, uh, old man sitting on the side of the road with the lorries rolling by. Growing, did it in a something, a something, and a little to the night. And it's like, don't let it bring you down. It's only castles burning. Find someone who's... Oh, there's actually, there's another Neil Young one that I quite like. It's probably a bit misogynistic, I guess, but it's A Man Needs a Maid. Um, it's like, my life is changing in so many ways. I don't know who to trust anymore. There's a shadow running through my days. Like a beggar going from door to door. I was thinking that maybe I'd get a maid. Find a place nearby for her to stay. Just someone to keep my house clean. Fix my meals and go away. A maid. A man needs a maid. It's got all this boom, boom. Oh, but then hey, hey, my, my, rock and roll will never die. That's a good, I don't know. It's, I don't just like Neil Young, but yeah, all kinds of music. I like the song, um, quirky little pop song. Um, it was by a band called Naked and the song was called Sexual 
I don't know why I liked it. It's just a bit of weird falsetto. It's like, you know, you got the thing that I've been looking for. Da 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 da. You make me feel like sexual or something. I can't remember. That was pretty good. So I, I, I don't like the idea that when you get old, you stop listening to current music. So I do keep listening to current music. Uh, you know, like, uh, why you gotta be so rude? Don't you know I'm human too? Marry that girl, marry her anyway. You know, like, bubblegum pop is fine too. Her Majesty's Secret Service, there you go. Um, night mate, say what am I doing singing for anyway? Uh, do you tend to listen to music while you're walking? No, very seldom. Um, and if I know I've got a an outlet and a safe place to sleep, I can charge up all my power stuff. But the first 45 days of the walk, that was uncommon and I needed to stay power independent, so almost no music. Um, there have been a few days since the south, the, um, south coast that I have, but I need to hear the trucks coming. <laughs> And I, I just, I love hearing the bird song and stuff too. I don't want to give that away. Do you miss your wife? Is it just you and your wife or do you have any kids? Wife and kids. Um, I adore them all. So I have three young boys. When I was diagnosed with my stage four cancer, my youngest son was three. What a train wreck, yeah? But he's nine now. My middle boy Sullivan is 11 and my eldest son Spencer is going to turn 13 soon. I will be home by the time it's his birthday. Um, dear Liddy, yeah, I know that one. Okay, we're all up to date on our comments. So that means it is bedtime. Okay, old man. So um, thank you for your time and interest. My name is Simon. Um, I am also sometimes called the Bullhead Superhero Captain Australia and occasionally one or two other things. I am walking from Brisbane to Melbourne I have come so far almost to a town called Eden. I'm in a town called Marimbula. That is probably a good 1,500 kilometres that I have travelled. And according to a road sign, I saw today I'm less than 600 kilometres from home. So the old fool's getting there. Um, it's in service of a charity called the Kids Cancer Project. And it's Xavier's birthday tomorrow. Very nice. Well, happy birthday, Xavier. So it's in service of a charity called the Kids Cancer Project, and it's also all about personal healing and us sharing this beautiful, beautiful country as I toddle my way through it like the world's oldest, hairiest, goofiest-looking superhero dressed up toddler. All the very best. Thank you for your time and interest. I'll update you tomorrow as I get moving. Good night, everybody. Sleep well, mate. Good night. Everybody says, well done. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself.